evening, everybody. Glad to see y'all here this evening. If you will, stand and turn to hymn number 772, 772, singing all four verses of when we all get to heaven. I want to hear y'all sing and sing loud and sing it with a lot of pep in your step. <laughs>
Uh, Lord, look uh, into your perfect law of liberty, uh, this wonderful book, uh, Lord, that you've given to us called the Bible. And we pray, Father, Lord, that uh, as we come together, Lord, that you would open up our, uh, our eyes and our minds and our hearts, uh, Lord, that we might, uh, Lord, see the things that we need to see, that we might hear the word and receive the word, uh, Lord, uh, as we look to it and see it. Uh, Lord, we lift all of those up that uh, have been mentioned. And uh, Lord, we're so uh, grateful and thankful, Lord, that we're able, Lord, to enter uh, into a time uh, where we can uh, let our petitions be made known, uh, that we can come uh, more directly uh, before your throne of grace. And uh, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, pray, and the Holy Spirit takes our prayers and, and uh, presents them, uh, Lord, to you this evening as you uh, intercede uh, on our behalf uh, before the Heavenly Father. Uh, Lord, we pray, Lord, that uh, your will might be done, uh, Lord, in the service this evening. Pray, Lord, that you might, Lord, uh, be with those who are sick and suffering, and that you might, uh, Lord, according to your will, uh, wrap your loving arms around them and lift them up. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray that they would receive words or, uh, Lord, uh, encouragement, uh, Lord, as they look to you. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would, uh, Lord, just uh, uh, draw strength, uh, Lord, from you to save you. May, uh, may their sicknesses and their ailments, uh, Lord, be uh, healed. Uh, Lord, if it be uh, your will to do so, uh, we know that you're able, uh, Lord, uh, to touch them and, and just one touch, uh, Lord, and they can be made well. So we want to thank you, Father, uh, for your presence uh, with us, Lord, always, uh, that you don't ever leave us nor forsake us. Uh, Lord, that you... Uh, Lord, are working uh, around us all the time. Uh, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would uh, be with all of those who uh, are in authority. Uh, Lord, that uh, they would, uh, Lord, look to you for wisdom and knowledge and understanding and guidance, Lord, as they uh, make decisions pertaining uh, to the people of this nation and people around the world. We pray, Father, Lord, now, uh, Lord, uh, receive unto to thyself all the praise and the honor and the glory, Lord, for whatever is said and done. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for our brother Al, and I want to pray, Lord, that you would uh, uh, just uh, take this music, Lord, this evening, and uh, Lord, receive it. May it be sweet a sound in your ear. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'd like for you to take your Bible and turn to uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 14. Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, if you will. And uh, I want to talk to you on uh, the subject of the demands of discipleship. The demands of discipleship. And we'll begin reading, Lord willing, in verse 25 of Luke chapter 14. And so we, we come and, and we find here that great multitudes uh, are following uh, the Lord Jesus. The, the Bible said that great multitudes went with him and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower or whatever you're going to build 
does not sit down and first count the cost. And I'll tell you now, if you're going to build something today, you better check out the cost because the cost is changing every day on lumber and materials uh, to build with and whatever it takes. Uh, electric wire, everything else that goes in with building. You've got to check the cost. And so, so you sit down first, count the cost whether he has enough to finish it. Uh, go to the bank and borrow the money. Make sure you got a you got enough money uh, to complete the job. Less after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All can see it begin to mock him. Say it. This man began to build and was not able to finish. Oh, what kind of going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Therefore, he says there in uh, or else, while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. Uh, so likewise, Whosoever ye of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for the land nor for the dunghill, but men throw it out. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Many people say that they are followers of the Lord Jesus. However, if you find only a few who meet the qualifications that Jesus has laid down for his disciples, it's one thing to say that you are a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to tell you this evening that talk, talk is cheap. Talk is cheap. It's another thing to prove it by being faithful, living a faithful life to the Lord. So we see there in that verse 25, there was a lot of, a lot of people Following him, and the key word is uh, any. The demands are the same for the man, for the woman, the boy, and the girl. For all who follow the Lord, the demands are the same. There's no difference. The man for the woman, for the, for the boy, the girl, uh, for the deacon, the Sunday school teacher, the preacher, all the members of the church, all the demands are the same. Our Lord made a plan where everybody could understand. For those that are going to follow Him, we have to put Him before everything else and everybody else. We have to put him 
before our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, our wives, our children, our husbands, and many, many, many Christians fall short in the area, and that's why we're not blessed or, or used of God. Uh, they think God does not have a right to ask them to do those things. And so uh, I want you to go with me over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. And let's look at that verse of Scripture in uh, 19 and, and 20. And it says, Or do you not know that your body, your body, is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, who you have from God? And you are not your own. And, uh, I'm sure we all have said, well, I know I should do this, or I should do that, or I should go here, or I should go there, but I make my own decisions. I'll decide sometimes our decisions are not in alignment with the Holy God. Say, but you're not your own, for you are bought at a price, what a price. Therefore glorify God in your body in your, and in your spirit, which are God's. So we don't belong to ourselves. Uh, when God uh, has called us, we are to submit and commit. He says he has purchased us with his own blood on Calvary's tree. And so he has the right to ask us to do whatever he wants us to do, whatever it is. Because we are not our own. We, he owns us. And we find also that we are to put him before our own self, our own self. This may be a, a hard thing, and I'm sure it is for, for quite a, a lot of people, uh, I think for, for some of us. But we are prone to be selfish. Now, we want our way. Uh, I'm sure you've heard this saying, my way or the highway. But there are times, because we're selfish, that we, we're going to do what, what we want to do. We're going to make that decision to do what we think is right for us. Listen, large crowds are following the Lord Jesus. They're going along with him where, wherever he goes. And uh, they don't realize it. But he's on his way to Calvary. That's where he's headed. He's headed to Calvary. He's already decided that he's going to suffer, bleed, and die for the sins of mankind. And he's on his way, and, he's, and all these people follow him. They, they don't have a clue as to where he's going. So he turns around and he says to them, if anyone comes to me and does not carry his own cross, carry his own cross, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. We ought to be cross bearers. And when you think about the Lord Jesus, going down that cobblestone street, having been beaten unmercifully, carrying that cross 
blood running down his body. And then those who are at home by way of strength. So we need to ask ourselves the question, are we really truly faithful disciples of the Lord Jesus? As we've gathered here. Philippians 1.6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in us or in you. We'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So this work, this, this ministry that God has called us into has brought us out of the muck and the mire of sin and planted our feet upon a solid rock. He's taught us the Word of God through Sunday school teachers and Preachers, and so we're to be confident. These disciples were able to go out and witness, witness the people. They were able to perform miracles because the Lord Jesus gave them that that power to do that. Now, there were some things that they couldn't do. But he said, being confident, uh, if we're going to go and, and be a witness, we have to be confident that we're going we're to do what the Lord wants us to do, and, and we're going to witness and share our testimony, and we're going we're gonna to win some. We're going to win some. If we faint not, we have to be confident. Be confident in, in realizing that, that we have the Holy Spirit of God living within us to empower us, to bring to memory uh, what needs to be said at any particular time on, on any occasion. Jesus told his disciples, don't, don't worry about what you're going, going to say when you go out because it will be brought to your memory. It will be given to you. The Holy Spirit will bring it to mind. So 
So, number one, self-sacrifice, verse, verse 25, self-sacrifice. Back over there in that uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 25. And great Lord Jesus went, went with him and he turned and said to them, We have to be willing to be a vessel to be used of God. Willing to pay the price. To go all the way. Discipleship is very demanding. And it, it, it demands our total self. It demands that we study the Word, hide the Word of God in our heart, that we might not sin against Him. It demands us to be to be vigilant, watch. It demands that we that we always be willing to uh, step through an open door to share the good news that Jesus saves. Be willing to pay the price. To be an ambassador, to be a disciple or an ambassador, to go with sent on a mission. That's what an ambassador is. Sent on a mission. And we're on the mission field. And we're to win some. Second thing, we have to forsake, forsake all. Forsake, we have to give up our time. I have to give up my time. Time is precious. Very precious. The Pharisees' banquet are being over. Our Lord continues on his journey toward the cross, toward God. And these great crafts, they don't have any idea, any notion of the cost of discipleship. I've seen people over the years uh, stand and testify how the Lord called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. How he led them to, to salvation by grace and faith. And how they came down to the altar and they committed their, their life and, and their total being to the Lord Jesus. And then some go astray. If there's anything that's uh, um, really going to really make you say it, is these church jumpers. They'll come into this church and you'll, you'll think, they, man, they're the hottest thing that come down the pipe. Next thing you know, they they have gone to another church. Uh, I know one guy. He's done been to about every church in the valley. And he was a clue and now he's gone to gone to Big Stevens Creek and he won't be there long. He's got a reputation. So what's it going to cost for you and I to really be a disciple of the Lord Jesus. Discipleship is very demanding. Very demanding. Do we or are we willing to go where God wants us to go? Are we willing to uh, to pay that go that extra mile to do whatever it takes to uh, to win some uh, for the glory of God. To encourage people. You know, sometimes when uh, a friend or a uh, church member or a loved one uh, is sick, it, it don't cost a whole lot to just go and sit and listen. And listen. Sometimes people just need to unload and, and they need to be able to unload on someone to be a listener. So we have to be a listener. 
and uh, sit there and let them talk. My wife and I went down to our friend's home and be challenged just that noon. Down there for about an hour and 45 minutes to two hours. And they talked about their daughter who just passed. Just let it out. And, uh, to be a good listener, and I am, I am not a good listener. Pat has said over the years, when you listen to me, you have to pull out some famous words, yes, dear. But I'm, I'm usually talking instead of listening. But to, that's a gift, to sit down and, let, and just let people talk and, and, and just kind of release the burden that they have in their heart to be a good listener. And uh, it takes a, a willing heart to do that. Are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing first of all to, to put Jesus Christ first. Put him first. Put him above our loved ones. Put him above our job. Our friends. first, to love him with, with all of our heart and our, all of our soul and our mind and our strength, to love him as, as he loved us. He, he paid it all. Willing, do we, are we willing to do all that we can do, do for him? Have to love him. All of our heart and our strength and our mind. Satan. Imagine that Job, that Job would give all that he had rather than lose his life and the life of his family. But Job was so spiritual. So spiritual. That he loved the Lord with all of his heart and, and look what it cost him. When we say we're willing to, to surrender all and, and to give all, are we like Job? Are we willing to give up? Same morning, Job to suffered to such extreme that he wanted him to curse God and die. Suffering. Here, yeah, our Lord and Savior, no one ever suffered like he did. Like he did. Yeah, Satan thought that under the law somehow, Job's children, he would, he would give in. But we have to be willing to give all. I think of the story of the rich young ruler that came to Jesus. to be saved to inherit eternal life. God 
very sincere young man. Very rich young man. And Jesus looked at him and said, Go sell all that you have. Years ago, I heard a preacher testify. He got a real fine home in the mountains. He said he felt God's call to go into evangelism. He sold his house and used that money to finance himself uh, to go on the, on the field to evangelize. Now, it might have been easy for him. But what about his wife? I wonder how that played out. And if he had children living at home, I wonder what they thought. I read an article in the paper just the other day. A young man, his family moved to another, another state. And he's having difficulty because he left all of his friends and acquaintances and here he is in another state, another town, another school. He doesn't know anybody. The rich young ruler did not sell all he had, did not give to the poor. He went away sorrowful because he wasn't willing to pay the price. He wasn't willing to take up his cross and follow the Lord Jesus. To be a disciple of the Lord. It takes commitment. It takes dedication. The pastor's search committee is working. It takes, it takes commitment to try to find the right person, the right fit for this church. It's going to take a commitment on the part of every member of this church to be a committed, dedicated disciple of the Lord. So that the lives of the Memorial Church will not go out. But it will remain a lighthouse in this community. Sit down, look at the situation, count the cost, and see what it's going to take to keep on keeping on for the glory of God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. We're looking at Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the time, Lord, that you have allotted us this afternoon, Lord, to look to your word. We pray, Heavenly Father, Lord, that as each one of us searches our hearts, Lord, that uh, we are willing, Lord, we'll be willing uh, to forsake all and take up our cross daily and follow you. I pray, Lord, that we would uh, be able, Lord, to uh, step through doors and share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Bless your people. Bless this church. Go with us, Lord, as we go our separate ways and bring us back this Lord's day. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. And Lord, lay some soul upon our heart, uh, Lord, that we might, uh, Lord, share that, that wonderful news in Jesus' name. 
Go with us now. Amen and amen.